So what I want to do is show you how to derive the quadratic formula because when we get through all this point, a lot of people say, oh, I like using the quadratic formula a lot, you know, and that's all great. Um, but, you know, kind of where does it come from? How did we really create that quadratic formula? Well, let's kind of go back to what we've been doing. We've been talking about quadratic equations. That's in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And a couple things that we've done is we've rewritten them. When we completed the square, we wrote them into the form of y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. All right, but then when we started looking at the uh, quadratic formula, we saw the quadratic, quadratic formula was in the form of x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of 4 times a times c, I'm um, sorry, square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So how do we go from this to this to this and without following, it, following the same process? Well, remember your h and k just represent different parts of our equation. They're a little bit different than there, but these all still represent quadratic equations. And then this is a format for us to be able to find our x-intercepts of our quadratic or our zeros or our roots. So what we're going to do to go from this process to this, this form, we use the quadratic, I'm um, sorry, we use completing the square. And when completing the square, what the nice is about completing the square is over here, the only way for us to solve this was to factor it because we had two x's. But we had it in completing the square, we could use the square root method to be able to solve for our value of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and I'm going to complete the square with it. And by completing the square, what I'm going to then do is solve for x and notice that we are going to now obtain the quadratic formula. So let's go through the process again of completing the square so you can get an idea. Remember the first thing that we're doing when completing the square is we need to make sure we cannot have an a in front. Our, our a has to at least be one. So we don't know what our a is in this case, so we're gonna make sure we factor it out. The also, we're trying to solve for our values of x, so we're gonna set y equal to zero. So I factor out an a, and you notice that the b does not have an a, right? But if I factor out an a, then it would represent as b over a times x plus c. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this, and remember, I, only, I always like to just factor out the a from the first two terms. So therefore, now I have this divided, I have this factored out an a, and we can always check our work by applying the distributive property to make sure that we get the right, um, get the same uh, answer back when we apply it. So now we need to uh, do our b divided by 2 and square it. Well, in this case, our b is b over a divided by 2 squared. Well, b over 2 uh, divided by 2 is really just going to be the same thing as b over 2a squared. So that's going to become b squared over 4a squared. All right? Now, remember, when solving, there's a couple different ways. We can add or subtract on the same side, or we can add our b squared over 4a squared on both sides. And that's the way I'm going to do it for this problem. So I'm going to add b divided by, or I'm sorry, b squared divided by 4a squared on both sides. And then I'm going to make sure I add this inside my parentheses. Now remember, when completing the square, when we have an a, if I multiply this a times b squared over 4 a squared, I also have to multiply an a on this side. So I'm going to make sure that I add, actually what I'll do is I'll just put this in parentheses. Then remember, I'm going to add, and that's going to be in the numerator. Now what's important about adding and multiplying that on both sides is you can now see this a and the a squared are going to have to undo each other. So now I just have 4a and my denominator. Then I need to subtract the c on both sides. So therefore, I'm left with b squared over 4a minus c is equal to a. Now what I need to do is I need to factor my trinomial. Now remember, when we complete the square, what we're doing is we're creating a perfect square trinomial. And when creating a perfect square trinomial, we can always factor that down to a binomial square. And remember, the binomial square can always be written as x plus or minus b divided by 2 squared. So that's going to be your factored form. So now I just need to look at it and say, what was b divided by 2? Well, b divided by 2, remember, this is how we got to that. Um, b divided by 2, I'm sorry, b a is my b. So when I divided by 2, I didn't show this to you before, but just so you can see why we get this, 
is going to be b over 2a. All right, so that's going to be my um, binomial squared. So it's going to be x. And since these are both positive, I'm going to use the positive value of my factor, x plus b divided by 2a squared. All right, now I have this b squared divided by 4a minus the c. Well, I want to get these to be under the same denominator, so I'm going to multiply this by 4a over 4a. Therefore, now I can combine these to one expression, so therefore I'll have b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 4a. Now, I need to get rid of my a, so I'll divide by a on both sides, now let's just rewrite it I guess, equals a times x plus b divided by 2a squared, then I'll divide by a on both sides, and let's continue our work over here. So I'm dividing by a, that's the same thing now, as multiplying by its reciprocal, divided by a, so therefore I'm going to have to multiply by the reciprocal. So therefore, I'll now be left with b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 4a squared, equals x plus b divided by 2a squared. All right, so I'm getting somewhere, right? Uh, just kind of notice that, you know, I'm dividing by this a, I'm having like a triple one, so therefore I had to multiply by the reciprocal on the top and the bottom, and therefore you can see how it reduces. I did the same thing over here. So now I need to take the square root, because now I'm going to apply the square root method. So I take the square root of both sides, and remember when we take the square root, we have to make sure we include the positive and the negative. So therefore I have the square root of, I'm um, sorry, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And since these are separated by subtraction, I cannot take the square root of b squared or the square root of a of 4. However, since this is one, uh, since this is a monomial, I can take the square root of 4a squared, which then becomes 2a equals x plus b divided by 2a. Now, to solve for x, I subtract b over 2a. And then I notice these have the same denominators, so my final answer is going to be x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a as I can combine these two denominators. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you get the quadratic formula uh, to solve for your x-intercept roots of zeros. Thanks.